Hi, uh, Gardner from the future here. So I have to be honest with you. I made this video pretty dang quickly because I'm getting ready to move and I needed content to go up while my home office was out of commission, you know, in transit. Uh, so I made this video, I thought I was done. Uh, and honestly, I hadn't really thought about the consequences of this video. Most of the time, I try to make videos that are lighthearted and fun. Uh, so the last thing that I would ever want is for an individual to be targeted by an internet mob of hate because of one of my videos. I don't want that to happen. That's the last thing that I would want to happen. The original cut of this video was pretty dang critical of Data Drake's post. And I hadn't considered uh, the real world consequences of making this video. I honestly hadn't thought about uh, the backlash that Data Drake or even Brain Blasted might receive because of the things that they said in this thread. So straight up, if you're the kind of person who is gonna watch this video and feel inspired to go harass someone because of their opinion, uh, you should kindly feel ashamed of yourself and stop watching this video right now. That's not how good people behave. Thankfully, uh, I have enough time here to correct this. I, I don't want this to be uh, a mistake. I don't want this video to be uh, the way that I actually made it originally. So my pal Ryan reached out on Twitter and suggested that I actually talk to Data Drake before the video goes live. So yeah, I said, absolutely, I'd love to talk to him. Um, so stick around to the end of the video because I did get to talk to him. And while I definitely don't agree with him uh, on a lot of his take here, I do think he is a really genuinely nice person. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I don't want people to hate on Data Drake. All right, so now back to uh, the other day when I was actually filming this. <laughs> Last month, a question was posed to Solus's forum. Given Solus's position on libhandy, this means that as time progresses, more and more GNOME packages are gonna be held back, deprecated, or removed. Is that true? Harvey Birdman apparently replied to the, the, to the question and it said, uh, potentially. I wasn't sure what the Solus dev team's position was on libhandy, so I kept reading. Now, at this point, if you're wondering, what is libhandy? Well, that's pretty simple. It's a library that helps GTK3 apps uh, and eventually GTK4 apps to resize themselves depending on the size of the display. It also adds touch support. And it's worth noting that it was created by the company behind the Librem 5, Purism, so there's a bit of uh, <laughs> skepticism out there. Then I came upon this post by Data Drake. Many people don't know this, but I've actually spent a fair amount of my professional career working on web-based applications. In my undergrad years, I got distracted by chasing trends and frameworks. One of those trends was mobile-first development. We used to design for 1024 by 768 running on anything from Internet Explorer 7 to the then new Google Chrome. It was clear that we needed to change how we were doing things to handle mobile devices and later high DPI displays. We couldn't think of websites as print media anymore. They needed to react, groans, to changes in window size, display size, available hardware, etc. As is true with most course corrections, the first set of changes are way too far in the other direction. We spent so much time circumventing the limitations of web browsers with JavaScript that standards like CSS and JavaScript have barely evolved in the last decade, which I might interject for a moment is one of the more ludicrous things I've ever read a, a developer say. It was stupendously uh, weird to read that. I mean, CSS Grid or Fluxbox, uh, ES6. I mean, web technologies are evolving incredibly fast. It feels like maybe you just have been out of the game for the last decade. <laughs> I don't know. He continues, worse, web UI has changed to support mobile and touchscreens as a first priority, meaning that elements have become sparse and padded to hell, even on desktop, quote, optimized styling. If you don't have a high DPI display, this gets even worse. Data Drake continues, Purism recognizes the need for responsiveness in GTK3 apps and wrote libhandy to provide a set of GTK3 compatible widgets uh, which fill in some of the chasm between GTK3 and the expectations of GTK4. It seems to mostly improve the responsiveness of certain widgets by replacing them entirely and focusing on mobile device support and touchscreens. This is fine if you're a company uh, trying to promote GTK3 for mobile applications running on Linux, but it begs a couple of pretty serious questions. Number one, why couldn't they just have worked on improving the existing GTK3 widgets? Why did they assume that mobile first is inherently better? How do they know this won't harm the desktop experience? 
Why are they going around and patching libhandy into desktop applications like GNOME boxes that have no reason to be run on mobile systems? And won't all of this just be a waste of time uh, once GTK 4 is out? Data Drake then said, I personally feel that Purism should have worked on improving GTK widgets rather than writing their own widget toolkit that they are now going around and infecting other projects with. Brain Blasted then entered the chat, and uh, he decided to respond. Brain Blasted, if you don't know, is a developer at GNOME, and he had a reasoned response to just about every question that uh, Data Drake posed in his original post. Why couldn't they just have worked on improving the existing GTK3 widgets? Brain Blasted explained, GTK3 is stable and mostly feature frozen as efforts shift to GTK4. Changes to existing widget behaviors beyond fixes and new uh, widgets were not going to make it into GTK3. Why then do they assume that mobile first is inherently better? How do they know that this won't harm the desktop experience? Again, Brain Blasted comes back with a response. We don't design things to be mobile first. We design them to be adaptive. There has not yet been a case where making an app adaptive or adding libhandy widgets made things worse for desktop users. In some cases like Geary's, we're able to make things like half tiling work better on desktop. And that's something I've noticed actually. Why are they going around and patching libhandy into desktop applications like GNOME boxes that have no reason to be running on mobile systems? Libhandy now hosts quite a few widgets we want to use as part of the GNOME human interface guidelines or for different features. HDY Carousel adds a nice way to have sequential views with gestures. HDY Avatar provides a standard avatar widget instead of each app carrying a different one. And HDY Preferences window gives a standard clean look for preferences. All of these things that are wanted in different forms across multiple GNOME apps and have very little to do with quote, mobile systems. Won't all this just be a waste of time until GTK4 is out? Brain Blasted said, most of those widgets will not make it into GTK's core. Lib Handy will be the home for them for the foreseeable future. Here's the thing, GTK4 will definitely have some responsive design built right into it. But at the same time, most of the Lib Handy features that are that are part of Lib Handy are gonna remain as part of Lib Handy. So Brain Blasted replied to Data Drake's post with some considered arguments, not in a way to try and attack Data Drake, mind you, but just these are, you know, the insight of a GNOME developer uh, in the forum where there seems to be a lot of FUD when it comes to uh, Purism's lib handy. Data Drake then came back at Brain Blasted with a bunch of terse responses and then locked the thread. And according to Brain Blasted on Twitter, uh, he was then blocked from the Solus forums. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm all for the judicious use of, uh, of blocking someone, right? As an internet personality who wants to remain sane, I fully understand the need to be able to ban, like, especially incredibly abusive people from leaving comments on my videos. But that's pretty rare of a thing. And far be it for me to pass judgment. I'm not gonna try and tell the Solus devs how to run their community. Oh, and if it wasn't clear on what their actual take was, here's a discussion from June 9th posted by Oliver, who noticed that Gnome Contacts was no longer a part of the Solus repo and that Geary had been frozen at 3.34. He asked, what's so wrong with Lib Handy, please? Harvey Birdman, attorney at law, jumps in with uh, GNOME Contacts and GNOME News now require LibHandy, a mobile-focused UI library built by Purism and currently considered unstable. Not only do uh, we largely not accept the usage of unstable libraries in the repository, but having applications which target or force the installation of mobile UXs or their libraries are not acceptable, considering that we are solely focused on modern home computing devices, laptops, and desktops. Solus team gets to decide what is or is not in the repository. Several applications have been either rejected for inclusion, held back for uh, from newer versions, or kicked from the repository due to requiring lib handy. Now I get it. I get it. If it's a reasonable uh, thing to say, you know what? It's an unstable library. We're not including it. But at the same time, they're they're stuck on this idea that lib handy is just meant for mobile design. Uh, and it's not. As Brain Blasted pointed out in his first post, his first and only post on the Solus forum, Geary is now tileable thanks to libhandy inclusion. And there are many other Linux apps that benefit from the inclusion of libhandy. Hi, Gardner from the future again. Uh, yeah, so Data Drake and I actually got to talk. Uh, we exchanged a few DMs on Twitter. And uh, he explained that, yeah, the Solus devs don't want to include libhandy. And you know what? For a developer, 
Uh, for someone who manages a Linux distro, his reasoning is sound enough. He said, quote, Two of the things that set Solus apart from other things is what we refer to as curation and integration. The latter is our focus on packaging, configuring, and making sure that everything just meshes well together. The former is a bit more complicated. Curation means different things in different contexts. Most people get their first taste of it when they realize that our repository doesn't have every piece of software under the sun. We're very picky about what uh, we let in and what we keep long term. If software goes years without development, it gets to boot so that we don't end up having to maintain it. If we already have several of a particular kind of program, we don't usually let new ones in unless there's something unique about it that makes it worthwhile. It's important to remember that we only have six team members and only around another 10 to 15 community maintainers. We don't have some kind of army of people to handle maintenance. So this sort of curation is really important to us. It keeps the focus of Solus laser sharp and helps us spend time on things that we really care about. Talking specifically about libhandy, Data Drake said, that post on the forum the other day was the latest in a year long saga of people disagreeing with our decision to keep libhandy out of the repo. We evaluated it heavily in the early days. We check in on it from time to time to see how apps that do or do not benefit from it. We're not just some armchair neckbeards with a bone to pick with newfangled technologies. Josh and I both agree that it suffers from all the same problems that we saw with responsive UI on the web and mobile. And I'll admit that I used pretty strong language in that post. I was pretty upset to be having to justify this decision uh, yet again for people who just want to argue with us because we're not adopting the next big thing. It's our distro. All we really want is for people to respect our decisions. If they don't agree with us, that's fine. There are many other distros out there that will happily cater to them. But when a GNOME developer, who by their own admission was paid by contract to port things to libhandy for purism, decides to drop into our forums and start trying to reverse that decision, it's hard to not feel targeted. I have nothing against libhandy, purism, or GNOME. I don't always agree with them and I don't have to like what they do, but our decision to not include libhandy is one of preference, not malice or spite. I'll also admit that I do regret banning Brain Blasted without giving him a fair chance. I just didn't want to argue with anyone about it anymore. So yeah, Drake and I disagree on some stuff. <laughs> well, personally, I don't think Blasted's post was actually trying to like target them or even trying to convince them to change their mind. I thought he was more just, uh, trying to correct some of the misunderstandings that they might have had. I do understand how Drake could feel targeted having to defend this opinion and being asked the same questions for over a year. I mean, I get annoyed when people ask me the same questions over and over again. Like, is Gardner your first name? Yes, it's my first, it's my real first name, guys. <laughs> And you know what? Honestly, Drake seems like a really salt of the earth kind of person. I mean, when it comes right down to it, I asked him if he wanted to do a voice or video call and he declined because he values his privacy and isn't interested in becoming, quote, a Linux rock star. I get that. I really do. So yeah, I disagree with his take on libhandy. Uh, pretty strongly, in fact. But you know what? It's their distro. And he is right. If you don't like it, there's plenty of other Linux distros out there. Now back to the original ending. <laughs> and again, I'm not making this video to try and like shame the Solus devs or anything like that. I'm making this video because I feel like there's way too much fear and uncertainty and doubt when it comes to libhandy. It's not just about the user experience or the user interface on mobile. This is about making Windows in GNOME with GTK3 and GTK4 for that matter, usable on any form factor screen. And the fact that we have any screen ranging from, you know, tiny to 4K or even higher, I think that's a worthy goal. Now, and I also understand that I'm kind of in a unique position where I've been able to witness firsthand the progress that Purism has made in both the hardware of the Libre 5 and in the software development with Fosh. I can understand where some people would see the, the delay after delay for the, for the hardware especially uh, and, and maybe have raised an eyebrow or two. I, I can understand that. But the Librem 5 is a real device and the software, the free and open source software that Purism has created is nothing short of remarkable in my opinion. I just wish people would step back from their blustering opinions and really appreciate that for a moment.
But I don't know. What do you think about this? Do you think this is just like some Linuxy drama? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here as always. I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for my patrons. So thank you guys. I appreciate your support. If you want to help this, what I do here, if you believe in the work that I do, you can help support the show over on Patreon. It makes a huge difference. Uh, but no matter what you do, don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with your friends. You can also subscribe to see more from me. Um, but I think that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one and have a blessed day.